What's good, y'all? It's Jimmy from Just the Facts here. Today we've got our Texas basketball season preview. Um, we play tonight. I'm trying to get this video out before the game. We'll see about that. But I feel highly about this season. Um, I feel really, really good about this season. For one reason and for one reason only. We got the one and only five-star Greg Brown. Texas is back on the on the hunt for the best big man in high school, right? Or at least one of the best big men coming out of high school, Greg Brown, this year. Obviously, last year, we really didn't have a guy, even though Kai Jones came on late. 2018-2019, um, we had Jackson Hayes, year before that, Mo Bamba, and then year before that, Jared Allen. You know, then year before that, um, or two years before that, Miles Turner, which was in the Rick Barnes era. But we're returning everyone this year, so... I don't think there's really any excuse for Shaka Smart not to be successful. And I'll get to what I mean by successful in a minute. I'll get to my expectations. Let me give you a quick rundown of Shaka Smart's tenure at Texas. His first season, 2013 record, 11-7 and in the Big 12. Lost to Northern Iowa in the round of 64. The next season, his second season, 11-22. and I really I only watched the first like eight games of the season and I, and I knew it would be really bad so I stopped watching the whole season. Um sorry Jared Allen. Eleven and twenty two, four and fourteen in the Big Twelve. That was last in the Big Twelve. Third year, nineteen and fifteen, eight and ten in the Big Twelve, lost to Nevada in the round of sixty four. That game went to overtime. Year after that, year four, twenty one and sixteen record for Shaka Smart. 8 and 10 in the Big 12 and IT champs. Okay, he saved his job by doing that. Last season, it looked really, really bad, especially that, what, 40 point loss to uh, West Virginia on the road. 19 and 12 record last season, 9 and 9 in the conference. And I'll give him credit. I'll give Shaka credit. He won five of his last six games last season. And we're one of the hottest teams in the country heading into the big into conference championship week. No excuse this year because listen to this depth chart that I made up. Point guard Matt Coleman, shooting guard Courtney Ramey. You can say another guard or small forward, whatever. I'll, I'll just go another guard. Uh, Andrew Jones at the three. Greg Brown at the four. Sims at the five. Just very, very solid. Very, very experienced starting five. Very talented starting five. Um, backup point guard, I say Courtney Ramey can play a lot of point guard as well. He's a good four general. Well, Donovan Williams behind uh, Courtney Ramey at the two spot. At the other, at the other guard position after Andrew Jones, I got Jace Febris. At the forward spot behind Greg Brown, Royce Ham. Center spot after Sims, I got Kai Jones. That's ten deep right there. And if you want to go even further, you got Brock Cunningham who can play a little bit, hustle guy. Jerry Liddell, long, lengthy, can play some defense, bring some energy. Will Baker, who kind of lost his confidence last season, especially shooting a three ball. Um, you could just see it, but hopefully he's better. Kamaka Hepa, this is the 13th guy I just mentioned. And he can be a great part of this rotation. We're loaded as hell, but... Unfortunately, there will be odd men out. Uh, I think two guys will not really get much playing time. Um, unfortunately. So there's no excuse for, for Shaka Smart. He has a lot of guys to work with. He has a lot of talent. He has a lot of experience. Every single person from last year's roster is back. There's no excuse. Can the offense stay smooth? And I, I say stay because Texas did a really great job towards the end of the last season. Um, in terms of their offense, a reason why we're winning is because we're scoring some damn points. We're getting up and down the court. Why are we? We're successful because we're getting up and down the court, playing off of our really good defense, getting easy buckets in transition, not having to really do too much in the half court because we know how the half court offense looks a lot of the time for the past six years, honestly how Texas half-court offense has looked. We brought in Luke Yaklich from Michigan. We had him for two years, I believe, in hopes to 
fix up the offense, get some more motion and diversity in there. Didn't work at all. Offense looked the exact same. He's gone now. We bring in KT Turner from SMU as a assistant head coach, I guess, or whatever. SMU's had some pretty good offenses over the years while he's been there. Um, just to mention, Jay Lucas is gone as well. Um, I met him a couple months ago, Longhorn legend. <laughs> um, I just want to see the offense look better. And when I say can the offense look better, can the offense not look bland for 20 seconds on the shot clock? We bring the ball up and then for 18 to 20 seconds, we just seem like we're running through the motions. We don't really know what we're doing. We're just passing the ball and we're not making any moves off the off the ball, which we have done a little bit a better job of recently, but we're still not that good offensively. We have the talent though. I, I'm going to keep saying that. How much can Greg Brown develop offensively? Well, Let's look back. Jason Hayes, did he develop much offensively? Mm, kind of, but not really. He dunked everything he caught. Um, that's for sure. He came on as the season went along. He he got really, really good by the time the end of the season came around. Um, Mo Bamba, did he really develop his offensive game over the year? Yeah, I, I guess you could say a little bit. He did start, start shooting the three ball. Um, a little bit more and a little bit better as the season went on. I will say Jared Allen did come along as a really offense, a real good offensive low post threat as the season went along, and I believe he's the best. Um, he's the best offensive player out of all those big men I just mentioned up until Greg Brown. Uh, Jared Allen did a good job of of doing his thing in the post uh, more than any under center that we've had, um, and that brings me back to Greg Brown. He's not a really a center. He's like a he's a hybrid, honestly. Um, some people list him at six seven. Some people list him six nine. I think he's a four. I think he's a four on the court. Um, maybe a three if he improves the handle. I've seen I've seen clips of Greg Brown, and it's weird because he shoots right handed, but he dribbles a lot with his left hand. He dribbles more than his right with his left. Um, he's really left dominant when he's dribbling the ball. Um, his shot has some work to do it has potential but it has some work to do like i said the handling has potential but have, has a lot of work to do as well i think this guy would will be good as long as we get up and down the court as long as we get up and down the court greg brown will be just fine he'll get to uh display his his full arsenal his full skill set not his full skill set in arsenal but he'll start to show more signs of being a really really good offensive player okay now on the defensive side, how can Greg Brown be really good defensively? Will he foul? Will he average four fouls a game like Jason Hayes did, like Mo Bamba did? Right? I don't think he will. I think he's actually the most athletic out of all these guys. We've had some athletic dudes, right? This guy's the most athletic um, vertically and laterally. He can. I think he can move around and and guard probably up to four positions. He just needs to stay disciplined. Shaka just needs to, you know, put him in, in good hands, and he will. Um, Shaka's a really good defensive coach. He'll do that. Um, <clears throat> but as a team defensively, we, we, we tend to be pretty good defensively. Um, one problem we have is fouling. Um, I believe that was one problem we really had over the past couple years in terms of defense. Um, we don't give up too many three-pointers. That's really good. Um, even though we give up a really good percentage. We don't really give up many makes, um, and we've always had the rim protector. We have we've, we've always had rim protection. Uh, this year we have rim protection to hell with Sims, with with uh, Kai Jones, with with Greg Brown. So <clears throat> defensively, uh, we should be great. And then on the perimeter, you got pesky defenders like Matt Coleman, who's going to take charges and all that stuff. Who's going to poke the ball out your hands? Courtney Ramey and Andrew Jones, who's going to poke the ball out your hands and really lock in um, when the time is needed? And hopefully the other guys can just be good enough defensively um, and not get beat too much. Uh, I think we will we will do a good job of that. Um, as for a quick non-conference outlook, non-conference schedule is looking like Dave Davidson. We play Villanova. And then I have to mention this. We play at Baylor a week later from playing Villanova. Number three Villanova. We play number two Baylor or number one Baylor, right? And then the Big 12 SEC Challenge, we play at Kentucky once again. You know, we played there, what, six years ago? It was a top 10 matchup. 
Um, we lost to, you know, the greatest college team of all time, as far as I'm concerned. They didn't win the title, but they're the most talented college basketball team of all time. And we were hanging in there with them. So, um, for whatever that's worth. Conference expectation and outlook. So, I will say this first. Last year, Kansas and Baylor were the one and two teams um, in the Big 12. Kansas went 17-1 and in the conference. Baylor was second. They went 15-3 and in the conference. After Kansas and Baylor... No team had double-digit wins in the conference. Oklahoma was at 9-9, who finished third. West Virginia was 9-9, finished fourth. Texas was 9-9, finished fifth. Texas Tech, who had a down year, was 9-9, sixth place. I expect these teams to be at the top once again, these same teams, um, excluding Oklahoma. Baylor, Kansas, Texas Tech, West Virginia, and Texas. Those are the top five teams in the Big 12. Just are. They just are. We have to be amongst these top five teams. We have to be. Um, I know the Big 12 was down last year, but it's going to be back this year. Um, it's 12 and 6 in the conference. Too much to ask for. 12 and 6, that's not bad. 12 and 6 is not too much to ask for, especially with the experience, with the talent, with the momentum we're riding from last season. Hopefully that stays with us. It's 17 and 8. A really good record overall. We're only going to play 25 games in the regular season. Is 17 8 bad? No, I can see us. We better split Kansas. We better split Baylor. Hopefully. 17 8 is not too much to ask for. And, and 12 and 6 in a conference. I don't think that's too much to ask for. Can Texas make an NCAA tournament run? We're capable. We're very capable. We have the experience. Everyone's coming back. We have two, three seniors in the rotation, right, and a whole bunch of juniors. We have guard play, which is a big thing, apparently, with um, college basketball making a run. And, and I agree. We have Matt Coleman, who's a steady point guard. We have an experienced coach who has been there before, kind of. He's been to a Final Four. He's made a run with a inferior team. Why not make a run with a way more experienced, I mean, way more talented team? Why not? And we have that game changer type player with Greg Brown that can put us over the top. I'm being optimistic here. I'm being optimistic here. Shaka's never made it out the round of uh, 64. Is Swiss 16 too much to ask for? Probably. Round of 32? Come down to the last seconds or something? This is a big season. You know, my, my expectations overall. Are 17 and 8 for the season, 12 and 6 in the Big 12 Conference, and make the NCAA tournament with at least a six seed or better. And win at least the NCAA tournament game, Chaka. Please. Please. Maybe Sweet 16. That might be pushing it a little bit, but let's try to make a run. I'll do my quick awards to end this thing off. My MVP, Most Improved Player, Defensive Player of the Year, Freshman of the Year, um, and Sixth Man of the Year for our team. I think the MVP of the year will be Andrew Jones. People forget how good Andrew Jones was right before he had to, you know, stop playing and get the cancer treatment. He was our best player in that 2018 season in the beginning. You know, the season with Mo Bamba, remember that game versus... Duke, where we should have beat Duke. Remember that game versus Gonzaga, where we should have beat Gonzaga? Those were back-to-back -back games. We were up double digits in, and we should have won. Andrew Jones was leading that team. Yeah, we had Mo Bamba, but Andrew Jones was the guy. Coming off a really good freshman year, too. I think him being back, this is going to be his first, like, full year back um, into basketball shape. He's getting his body back. He's getting everything, athleticism. He's getting everything back. And I think he can be the MVP of the team. Greg Brown is another guy I was thinking about MVP for the team. But I don't know how good he will be offensively. I don't know how Shaka will use him offensively. Um, but defensively, I think he can be really, 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 really good for us. My most improved player, hopefully, is Kai Jones. Um, that was a real clear-cut guy here from the, guy, from the guys returning. Um... Hopefully he doesn't foul as much. Hopefully he stays on the ground a little bit more. Um, we know he loves to fly high, but 
I want to see how him st start to stay disciplined a little bit more and expound up upon his offensive game a little bit. Defensive player of the year, Greg Brown. And then Kai Jones was my second guy. Um, Greg Brown is a guy that is very versatile. I think he can... I think he can guard three to four positions on the court. That's that's some good stuff there. And I think Kai Jones can probably be in that same boat. But as athletic as Kai Jones is, I think Greg Brown's even more athletic. As crazy as that might sound. Freshman of the year, Greg Brown. Nothing else to say. I've said his name a billion times in this video already. I think he's going to be great. He's going to be greater than... Whatever Jason Hayes, Mo Bamba, Jared Allen was here. And they're they're pretty good for us. Our sixth man, I think, will be Jace Febris. Shooter. And a shooter. That's all I can say. Um, I think his defense ha has been really, really improved. Um, and I think he, he's going to be essential for us to, to be able to be a really good shooting team. Maybe Andrew Jones comes off the bench. And gives us a spark because he can go off the dribble a little bit more. And maybe you insert Jace Febris in there because you want Ramey and Coleman to handle the ball a little bit more. And you want to have a guy in there that is more of a catch and shoot type of guy. I can understand that. Um, but if I had to go to six man, I'll go with Jace Febris. He's a he's a knockdown shooter and he, he has the confidence now to shoot those shots. And this lineup is pretty inter interchangeable. So I might be very, very wrong on the six man pick. But... MVP, Andrew Jones, Most Improved Player, Kai Jones, Defensive Player of the Year, Greg Brown, Freshman of the Year, Greg Brown, Six Man, Jace Febris. Sounds good to me. Let's get the season on the road, boys. This is Jimmy from Just the Facts. Let me know who your MVP, Most Improved, Defensive Player of the Year, Freshman of the Year, and Six Man of the Team are. And with that being said, Jimmy from Just the Facts, I'm signing out. Peace. Hook them.